I got a lot of books. Hi everyone, it is April from Getting Hugo With It. Today I've got a really big haul for you. Do I have more books coming? Yes. Could I wait to do this haul? Absolutely not. So we'll have to do another one a little later. But I've got so many books. I am surrounded by books. No wonder I need more bookshelves, bigger bookshelves. Um, this is it because I just keep buying books. Like, oh, I'm just ridiculous about buying books. And then I, I've been sent some lovely books as well. So I've got them kind of categorized. We're going to start with the scary ones because it's a, it's a fall haul. And I think that's appropriate. So I have two books that I want to share with you that were sent to me from uh, publishers, which is very exciting. The first is a book that kind of came randomly. Um, it was unsolicited, but it was from Penguin Random House Canada, who are so kind to me. Um, it's kind of unbelievable how nice they are to me. And um, I got a couple of books. The other one is a little later. Um, but they sent me The Beguiling by uh, Susie Gardner. And when I was looking at this, I was like, where would I put this? And I think it's horror. It sounds slightly terrifying and unsettling, that's for sure. This is about uh, a woman named Lucy. Her cousin... Um, is in a, a terrible accident at a warehouse party and he's on his deathbed and on his deathbed he tells her something um, and after he dies people start coming up to her and just confessing all of their sins. She becomes a walking, talking, wailing wall and everyone needs to divulge their innermost secrets with her. And it's about how she deals with it. I love this cover, it's so beautiful. Let's read the first line and see what we think of it. Will it be a five star, first line? I don't, I don't know, let's see. Did it really all begin with that wretched business concerning my cousin? I don't think that's a five star first line, but I think this is gonna be a really interesting and weird read. Definitely weird. Uh, another weird read that I I requested this book and it looks so good. Tor sent this over to me. Um, this is Ring Shout and this sounds fantastic. This is about the Ku Klux Klan, um, which did have a real spike in membership um, after 1915, when the Birth of a Nation was released. And if you haven't seen that, I mean, it's not pleasant. Um, it was the first real feature film that was ever created. And um, it basically is unbelievably racist and poses white men, the Ku Klux Klan, as the heroes and black people as villains, which is wrong. Um, so in this book, we, um, follow the Ku Klux Klan and we follow people, um, rising up against them and the Ku Klux Klan and its members are all demons. Not, not so far from the truth. Um, and it, it's a horror book and it sounds brilliant. Very small. I'm so eager to read this. I think it's just going to be fantastic. So let's read the first line of Ring Shout. <gasps> okay. Here we go. You ever seen a clan march? I haven't, and I don't want to. Um, that's not a five star first line, but I know it's gonna be so good. I'm so excited for this one. And then I went to Value Village, uh, like I do. I tend to go a lot and I got very, very lucky. This last time I went, I got quite a few books and I ended up finding The Institute by Stephen King. 
I thought this sounded interesting right from the get-go when it was first released. I, I was very curious about it. It's enormous as, I mean, most Stephen King books are big, right? They really are. Um, but this is about a child who is literally taken from his bed in the middle of the night, shoved into a van and sent and and kind of kept captured, um, kept captive, I should say, um, with a bunch of other kids. And all of these kids seem to have these special powers, different kinds of special powers, and they're being experimented on. And uh, apparently, if you go along with all of the experimentations that are done on you, um, you get uh, rewarded. But if you don't go along with it, you are punished, like horrifically punished. It sounds really good. It kind of sounds like X-Men a little bit, which I'm on board with because I love X-Men everything. So let's read the first line of the Institute. Okay. <clears throat> Half an hour after Tim Jameson's Delta flight was scheduled to leave Tampa for the bright lights and tall buildings of New York, it was still parked at the gate. Okay, so I, that, like, not at all a five-star first line, I will say. No, not at all. Uh, next is... Uh, a couple of books that were sent from publishers. Um, so, okay, funny story. I asked for um, a book called um, The Nothing Man by Katherine Ryan Howard. Um, they kindly sent me two other books. I'm going to show you one of those books here. Um, they sent me other books, which was so kind of them. But The Nothing Man ended up getting kind of lost in the mail. Apparently... It arrived and then was sent back. And I don't know how because I would not have sent that back. They're sending me another copy of The Nothing Man. I feel really badly. I'm just so desperate to read that one. But Catherine Ryan Howard is a an Irish uh, thriller writer. And her stories just sound good. I have another book of hers on its way from chapters. I just can't help myself. I can't. Um, so they sent me Rewind um, by Katherine Ryan Howard. So this book is very twisted. Um, this follows a, a manager named Andrew. He manages this group of cottages called Shanamore Cottages. And he actually watches his guests in their rooms. There's a camera, I guess, in all of the rooms. And she's the only guest and he's watching her, which crossing a line uh don't do that please makes me never want to you know go to a motel or anything like this um in any case while he's watching her a shadowy figure enters her room and murders her and um destroys the camera and andrew is left feeling obviously terrible and rightfully terrible and he's wondering how the murderer even knew about the camera in the room because i guess they're very much hidden in any case um natalie later um wishes that she'd stayed home but she ends up going to shannon moore there's something creepy about the manager she wants to leave but she can't not until she's found what she's looking for and apparently Catherine Ryan Howard does this really fun thing with um, tenses in this because there's play, pause, and rewind. And you go back and forwards in time in the book based on play, pause, and rewind. And I think all of the chapters are entitled, are, are um, entitled that way. So fast forward 44 seconds, I guess. Ah, it sounds good. Apparently... Uh, this is Psycho Meets Fatal Attraction. I, I just, I want to read this. That was so nice. Of uh, This is from Blackstone Books, by the way, publishing. Um, they were so kind to send this to me. So, okay, let's read the first line. In a room of shadows, a woman sleeps. Okay, it's not a five-star first line. I'm sorry to say, I just can't, I can't just randomly give that out. It's not, but it still looks good. And then Amazon Publishing sent a book to me that I requested that just sounds so gothic and delicious. 
for this time of year. It's Girls of Bracken Hill by Kate Moretti. Um, I've never read any Kate Moretti before. Have you? Let me know in the comments below. She wrote The Vanishing Year, which I, I've heard that title a bunch of times, but I'm going to start here, I think, with her. So this follows a woman named Hannah. Her aunt dies very tragically and suddenly in a car accident. And she has to go back to her aunt's home, um, where she also spent a lot of time when she was a child. But the last time she was at this home called Bracken Hill, I think, um, her sister went missing and was never found again. So she goes there to kind of sort through her aunt's stuff and arrange funerals and all of that not so fun stuff. Um, and she starts really thinking about her sister and she starts looking around the grounds and she finds a bone. Is it her sister's bones? What is happening? And she dives into the, the past of the home, the past in her family. It just, yes. It sounds great. Okay, let's read the first line of The Girls of Bracken Hill. September 2nd, 2001. I didn't mean to kill the girl. Ooh. Yes, five stars. I would say yes because it draws me in and I'm here for it. That sounds good. Okay. Um, okay, so the next two I'm not going to read the first line of and I do apologize, but they are the second and the third in a series. I think I mentioned recently-ish in a video that I'm looking for a new detective series to read. Um, like police procedural e series to read after I finished the Frida Klein series by Nikki French. It's my beloved series is over and I need to replace it. And so um, I think I've decided to go with Lars Kepler's series. I've got The Hypnotist and then I ran out and got these two books to go with it. And these books follow um, a woman named, oh uh, no, it's not a woman. Someone told me it's a male detective actually named um, Junalina. And um, he is essentially tracking down all sorts of mysteries. So in The Nightmare, which is the second book, I think uh, Junalina is trying to discover and figure out uh, a series of, of mysterious deaths. Um, one woman was found dead on an abandoned yacht. It looks like she drowned, but it doesn't seem like she was ever in the water. That doesn't make any sense. Anyway, the next day, a man is found hanging in his completely empty apartment. It looks like suicide but the circumstances are suspicious. So he looks into it. Um, and then I also got the fire witness, which is the third. And I think the fourth in the series ends up starting to look at a serial killer who like ends up being a main character throughout the rest of the series, which sounds great. This one deals with the horrific murder at a group home for teenage girls. Ooh, that sounds, that sounds disturbing but I'll read it. So I got those two books from chapters. I just can't help myself. And then I also got this one from chapters. You guys, I have basically spent half of my life at chapters. It feels like it is my home away from home. I can't help myself. I just love it there. Uh, so the next one is The Nesting by C.J. Cook. I didn't really know where to fit this. It's um, It's got a lot of gothic elements to it, but it is also in present day, I think. So I put it in thrillers. I'll probably put it on my gothic shelf, though. So anyway, it's in amidst the thriller mix here. Um, so this follows a woman named Lexi. She goes to stay with an architect and his two daughters. Um, she is going to be nannying for the family. Um, and he is an architect and he, he's constructed this beautiful home. And she arrives at this home, but the home has some issues with it. Um, so does the family. There's a lot of family history and there is myth surrounding this forest where they live called the Norwegian Forest. It sounds gothic and creepy and I am so here for this. I'm so excited about this book. 
Um, I might read it next. I might. Okay, let's read the first line and see what we think. Aurelia sprints through the dark forest, her white nightdress billowing like a cloud, her strides long and swift across the carpet of bark and brambles. That sounds beautiful. I wouldn't say it's five star, but it sounds like a lot of fun to me in that twisted weird way where I like scary things. The next book is totally your fault. Um, another chapter by Because of All of You. I ended up getting Dolores Claiborne by Stephen King. I think I had done an Amazon wish list video where I was kind of talking about all the books on my Amazon wish list, and so many of you were like, You gotta read Dolores Claiborne stat. And so I pretty much immediately bought it. Um, and here we are. Um, this is about Dolores Claiborne, who was a, a housekeeper, I think. Um, for this very wealthy woman named Very uh, Vera Donovan. She was incredibly wealthy in this small town, but she was also not so nice, not a very nice person. And there is a bit of mystery surrounding her death. Um, she died very suddenly in her home, and a lot of people think that maybe Dolores Claiborne had something to do with it. And we read from Dolores's point of view, um, about whether or not she did it and you find out the history of her interaction with this other woman. It sounds so good. I want to read this and then I want to go and watch the movie, which I have avoided these many years because I wanted to read the book first. That's restraint because I think that came out like the 90s? A long time ago. Um, okay, there's a foreword. That's not what we need. We need the intro. Here we go. Let's read the first line and see what we think. What did you ask Andy Bissett? Oh, I think it's meant to be, what did you ask Andy Bissett? Yeah, sometimes the way you say it changes everything, but it's still not a five star first line. Maybe I'll read that next. Oh my god, so many amazing books to read. Okay, this next book um, was a little hole on my bookshelf, was a little hole in my heart. Uh, this is to fill it. Um, I love Liz Nugent, as you know, I've got Little Cruelties on my shelves. I'll probably read that as my next Liz Nugent. But one of her books has not come out in America or Canada, and it doesn't look like it's going to be published here at all. So I went on Book Depository and I bought it because I need it in my life. I just need everything Liz Nugent in my life. This is Skin Deep by Liz Nugent. Um, this is about Delia O'Flattery. She's a, an Irish author and she just writes the most despicable characters that are just deliciously despicable. Um, this follows this woman who whose father completely adored her and was going to pass on this big uh, a big amount of wealth. Um, but I think something happens and she doesn't get it. And she has to rely on her beauty to get by. Unfortunately, she's also a horrible person. Um, her beauty is deceptive and anyone who cares about her eventually finds out. Um, so it sounds like this is a story about a terrible but gorgeous woman. Okay, so let's read the first line of this one. I wondered when rigor mortis would set in or if it already had. I, I, that's a five star first line. Cause you like, she's looking at a dead body clearly. Is it an animal? Probably not. It sounds like this is going to be a, a human body. I'm so happy to have skin deep. Oh, thank goodness for book depository. Hey, I just love it. So the rest of the thrillers that I need to talk to you about are all from a value village uh run that i that i did i couldn't help myself so again back to the whole detective thing i'm collecting um more and more detective series because i just think i i think it's going to be a thing that i enjoy um i have the drive by jane harper but i didn't have force of nature which is the second in the series um this series follows a man named aaron falk um this is australian 
And this particular book follows um, a mystery where five women uh, reluctantly picked up their backpacks and started walking along the muddy track. Only four of them came out on the other side and he is trying to figure out what happened. So I will read the first line of this one because I don't think, I don't think that it's gonna ruin anything about the past, like the first book in the series. So, okay, first line. Later, the four remaining women could fully agree on only two things. I don't think it's a five star first line, but I, I do kind of, it brings you in. Okay, and next, I, I don't know what's going on with me, but I've like, I'm taking a real gamble on Robin Harding lately and I'm just buying all of her books, even though I haven't read any of them, which is not, I should probably just read one of them and see if I like her before I start just buying all of her stuff. Um, this one is The Arrangement by Robin Harding. I just said that. Um, I, I am intrigued by this though. So this is about uh, a young art student in New York City. Obviously she's not making a lot of money. She's a student living in New York City. I don't know, know where she lives, but she's very much struggling with money. Um, and she decides to go online to find a sugar daddy. So what ends up happening is she ends up finding one who's like 30 years her senior. His name is Gabe, but she ends up actually quite liking him. He's wealthy, he's handsome, and she falls madly in love with him. But he's got a family already and he's not happily married because he's doing this with her. So I wouldn't say he's happily married, but he's married and doesn't intend to leave. Um, and she gets mad and she starts stalking them. Oh, that sounds, that sounds great. Okay, the first line is daddy. I do, I do like that that's the first line considering, but I don't think it's a five star first line. Um, next is another one where I'm in taking a gamble. I've never read Camilla Lackberg. I think many of you mentioned her series. Uh, she has a whole series out, like a detective series. This is a standalone, and I thought maybe I would start with the standalone, see how I feel about her writing, and then if I like her writing, I can dive into her detective series. It's just like a safer way to do it. So this is The Gilded Cage. I think this is called The Golden Cage in the US, and for some reason, the UK and Canada have The Gilded Cage. I don't know why they do that. Just, I, I feel like just stick with one title, right? So this is about, uh, it's like a domestic kind of thriller where we follow a woman named Faye who is married to a gorgeous man. They have a beautiful home in Stockholm and they have like a super cute daughter as well. Unfortunately, uh, it's all a lie. Um, she ends up at a police station and it turns out that her whole life is a lie. She's been lying about who she is, her name isn't really real, and the police are gonna find out everything about her when we meet her. So let us read the first line of The Gilded Cage. Couldn't she just be injured, Faye said? That sounds pretty good. I don't know if it's a five-star first line, but it does sound good. So there's The Gilded Cage. Another thriller writer that I've never read before, but one of my best friends, Stacy, absolutely loves her writing. I think this is her, I'm pretty sure. I always get confused between Lisa Jackson and Lisa Gardner, and now I'm confused as to which one she likes. Anyway, I got a Lisa Jackson. It's Running Scared by Lisa Jackson. And this one sounds very twisted and very weird. This follows a woman named Kate Summers who has a teenage boy. Now, the way that she ended up getting this boy uh, sounds actually quite immoral. Um, when she was younger, uh, 15 years ago, she was offered a healthy newborn baby. He was hers to keep and she kept him. Um, but it sounds like he might've been stolen and he was adopted illegally 
which is super disturbing. Um, in any case, now people are learning and people are finding out. And so she is on the run with her son, but I don't think has even told him about his own identity. Sounds very morally screwed up. Um, so let's read the first line of Running Scared. The first line of Running Scared is free. Not a five-star first line, but let's see what I think about Lisa Jackson. Have you read her before? Kind of curious. Uh, next is a book I've already read. Loved. Loved, 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 but didn't own. And I saw it at a Value Village and I was like, gotta have that right now. It's Final Girls by Riley Sager. I think Lock Every Door is my favorite by Riley Sager, but this is a close second. This is his first and it's just so good. It's about um, a woman who is a final girl because she survived a brutal attack, like a mass slaughtering and she's the only survivor. That's why they're called final girls and someone is killing off the final girls that she knows and she needs to find out who's doing that, how to keep herself safe. I loved this book. Um, you know, I've already read it, but I don't remember the first line. So let's check. The forest had claws and teeth. That's a five star first line. I just, I love his writing. I just do. Okay. And not, last but not least in the thriller category is, uh, a book finally by Tiffany D. Jackson. I've never read her before. She's a YA black author. Um, and I've been desperate to read her. So I ended up finding Monday's Not Coming. And I don't think this is one of her more well-known ones. Um, but I want to read it anyway. So this follows a woman named Claudia, who is best friends with um, a, a girl named Monday. And then Monday goes missing and nobody is looking for Monday except Claudia. So it sounds like Claudia is taking it in her own hands to go and try to find her best friend and try to save her, I guess. Hopefully she's alive. It sounds really good. Oh yeah, we need to read the first line of Monday's not coming. Okay, so September. This is the story of how my best friend disappeared. I like, I like that first line, but I don't know if I would say it's a five star first line. Okay, this stack over here of all of the scary books is about to, that's about to fall over. Okay, we're moving on, shall we? Um. Oh, why don't we move on to like fantasy-ish books? Um, I'll start with the other book that um, Penguin Random House Canada sent me unsolicited. I didn't really know where to put this one because it's, it's more magical realism, I guess, than fantasy. But like, I, w I don't, I don't have a magical realism shelf. So I'll probably put this on the fantasy shelf. Um, this is Bestiary by K Ming Chang. Um, it is a beautiful cover. Look at that. Stunning. Um, this is about three generations of Taiwanese American women who are haunted by the myths of their homeland. Um, and there is families, queer desires, violent impulses, and buried secrets. It sounds very interesting and very strange. Um, so let's read the first line of Bestiary. So it says, Mother, Journey to the West, or a story of warning from my only daughter, Moral. Don't bury anything. Okay, so here's the first line. That was just the title. Ba doesn't know where he buried the gold. That sounds interesting. I wouldn't say it's a five star first line, but it does sound good. And then another book that I got from Book Depository. Who am I? This is a fantasy novel. The poppy work. I, this is a booktube darling this i blame booktube basically um people who don't read fantasy are reading this and liking it so i kind of feel hopeful um the poppy war is about um a world in which people are trained to become warriors and i think we follow a woman in training 
and she ends up I think half of it is about the training at a school and the people around her the other students and then the other half is her actually going to war it's, and apparently it's very descriptive about the war and I'm I'm okay with that I I read horror I can do it okay the first line is take her clothes off I think that's a five star first line because it's jarring and you need to find out why someone would even say that to this person. So that's the Poppy War. Have you guys read this and what did you think of it? I hope that you liked it because it's like 500 pages and I, I feel invested. Um, first we'll move into nonfiction and then go on to historical fiction, shall we? Yes, okay. Another book that I ended up buying from Chapters because I did, literally cannot help myself is uh, The Spy and the Traitor by Ben McIntyre. This is the greatest espionage story of the Cold War. So this is, I, I don't think I've ever read anything that takes place during the Cold War. Um, this is about a spy who is a Soviet citizen and a spy for um, the Russian, the Russians. And he ends up being a bit of a double agent. He starts relaying the information to the British. Apparently no spy had ever done more damage to the KGB than this guy. Apparently it reads like a, a novel. It's very, very easy to read through. Um, yeah, it just sounds so good. So let's read the first line of the Spy and the Traitor. Introduction, May 18th, 1985. For the KGB's counterintelligence section, uh, Directorate K, this was a routine bugging job. Sounds good, not a five-star first line. Moving right along. So here is the other book that Blackstone uh, Publishing sent my way, um, just randomly out of like just the, the sweetest people over there just randomly sent this to me. This is Joe Kenda, Killer Triggers. Murder comes down to sex, drugs, or money. So it looks like he is an actual homicide um, detective. Um, this is nonfiction, as I mentioned before. And this book follows all of the homicide cases or many of the homicide cases that he um, worked on over his career. Um, and he examines the triggers that led to death. Oh, it's interesting. So he thinks that the why can often help detectives find out who did it. So one of the triggers was dementia. One of the triggers was money. One of the triggers was sexual rage. Ooh. Um, sounds interesting. Okay, so let's read the first line of uh, Killer Triggers. Chapter one, a runner's fatal walk, the trigger money. That's just the headers. Once I became the lieutenant in charge of the homicide division, my role was like that of a symphony conductor. It sounds interesting, but not a five star first line. Thank you to Blackstone Publishing for sending that my way. And then the lovely people over at Zondervan Books sent me Welcome Home by McKellen Smith. This is so lovely. This is a cozy minimalist guide to decorating and hosting all year round. Um, so it is split up into the seasons. Um, I've only read fall so far, but it talks about the elements that you need to have a minimalist but special um, season. And she talks about things like for fall, you know, change your sheets to flannel sheets. And, and you know, instead of buying like a ton of fake pumpkins, buy one real pumpkin and put it, like get a big one and put it on, on your dining table and, and have these standout things that make it cozy, but aren't overwhelming. <laughs> And I just, I've really appreciated this. I've already bought one of these for a friend of mine for Christmas. I won't say who because I don't want to ruin it. Um, but yeah, I really have been enjoying this. I can't wait to read the winter one, but it's still fall. Okay, so let's read the first line of Welcome Home. 
Yesterday, I ran into a Starbucks, and even though it's only August 19th, there was a sign out front that said eight more days to PSL, pumpkin spice lattes. Um, cute, not a five star first line by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, okay, now let's move on to historical fiction, and then we'll be done, because, uh, oh my gosh, this is going to be like an hour long video. Whew, hope you guys have gotten a snack are like chilling out a little bit and I hope it's interesting to you. Um, two books from Penguin Random House Canada. Again, the kindest, sweetest publishing house to work with here in Canada, in my experience. Um, the first is Cher Ami and Major Whittlesey. This is a World War I story that follows two characters a soldier in World War I, and a pigeon. They used pigeons in World War I to actually carry messages and stuff. And it follows the pigeon. I mean, what more do you need? I don't know, but it just sounds brilliant to me. When I read that synopsis, I was like, I have to read the story. I didn't even know they used pigeons in war. Horses? Yes. Pigeons? Okay, let's read the first line. To share a me. Um, monuments matter most to pigeons and soldiers. I really like that first line. Um, I really like that first line. I think that is a five star first line because it's kind of funny. Um, yeah, I have uh, Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk uh, on my shelves. I haven't read it yet, but I think I'm going to start here because it just sounds so wonderful. So there's that. And then I also requested a World War II historical fiction book. Is anyone surprised? This is The Royal Governess, a novel of Queen Elizabeth's childhood. So this follows the nanny who came into the Queen's life as all, and also um, Princess Margaret's life when they were children during World War II. She came from poverty and became their nanny, which can you even imagine? And um, it's about how she brought calm into their lives because I think a lot of the time they stayed um, like right in the middle of danger. Um, the royal family didn't really leave. I don't know if they sent the girls away though. I guess we'll find out in this book. It sounds wonderful. And I can't wait to read it. So let's read the first line of this. So a prologue, Aberdeen, Scotland, July, 1987. Everything was ready. Oh, I wish it started with something else because that's not a five star first line, but I really want to read it. Moving on, I have two books that my dear friend Stacy gave me. We kind of did a little exchange. I gave her books. She gave me books. And here are the two that she gave me. She gave me The Henna Artist, um, which was on my Amazon wish list, and I've really wanted to read. It's also a Reese's Book Club pick, um, so I hope that I like it. This follows a woman named Lakshmi. Um, she's 17 years old, so not really a woman at all, but she's married already. Um, it's the 1950s, and she has escaped her husband, who I think was quite abusive to her. Um, she escapes and she runs away to the village of Jaipur and there she becomes a henna artist and she has to be very careful because she doesn't want her reputation to be tainted. Um, she's very, very cautious about who she lets into her life and into her heart. One day she runs into her husband who has been searching for her. And I think it's about how she's trying to still escape him. It sounds like really nerve wracking. I don't even, I can't imagine being in that position, but I'm excited to read it. So let's read the first line. Prologue. This um, says Ajar, state of the Uttar Pradesh um, in India, September 1955. Okay, so here's the first line. Her feet step lightly on the hard earth, calloused soles, insensible to the tiny pebbles and caked mud along the riverbank. 
Um, not a five star first line, but you know that she's running away at this point, I think. Sounds so good. And then she also gave me a heartwarming book that I'm excited to read. It looks like she had it in the bath a little bit. <laughs> a little water damage there, but that's fine. This is the Jane Austen Society. This is about a group of people in the 1940s. And this group of people um, are living in post-war days. And they live very close to Jane Austen's cottage. And I think they have decided together to band together and take care of this cottage and maybe make it some sort of like monument to Jane Austen, maybe a, like a tourist attraction kind of thing because they she, they love Jane Austen so much. And, and I think the cottage has gone into disrepair and that kind of thing. And it sounds wonderful. And I think Stacy mentioned that she really, really loved it. So let's read the first line of the Jane Austen Society. Chapter one, Chawton, Chatton, Hampshire, June 1932. He lay back on the low stone wall, knees pulled up and stretched out his spine against the rock. Not a five star first line, but I still want to read it. And last but not least, we reached the end, guys, at like 47 minutes. Um, this is a book that I had on my Amazon wish list, and I found it at a thrift store. Value Village, I swear to God, sometimes, it looks like nobody read it, <laughs> is Lady Clementine by Marie Benedict. This follows Winston Churchill's wife. During World War II, while he was president, uh, not president, prime minister, excuse me. Um, but apparently it goes into how they met. Apparently she saved his life a couple of times. So of course this is a historical fiction view of her life. It's not necessarily entirely, entirely accurate, but I want to know who would be married to Winston Churchill, like such a strong character, um, I'm very eager to learn about Clementine and I absolutely love that name. Um, so, okay, let's read the first line of Lady Clementine. Okay, here we go. Chapter one, September 12th, 1908, London, England. I always feel different. That sounds good. Not a five star first line, but I really want to read this. Okay. Whew, now we're done. I can't believe that there were so many books. I can't believe that this is nearly 50 minutes long. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Um, the next book haul will most likely be a lot smaller <laughs> than this. I just, I've been buying and, and I've been sent so many wonderful books. Um, let me know in the comments below if you've picked anything up lately that you've been excited about or like, in here, um, if there are any books that you've read and you've loved, I'd really love to know what that is. I hope you guys are doing well. In the description box below, I've got my Patreon down there. I've got my Amazon wish list. I've got my Instagram, Goodreads. Go and check me out on all of those places. And I will talk with you guys soon. Bye.